Easter is the most religious day on the Christian calendar, and the ritual observances of the holiday take a variety of imaginative forms around the world. Many of these colorful celebrations are often tailored to the particular culture involved. And for most modern believers, it usually involves church services or perhaps an Easter egg hunt for the children. Uh, but in some corners of the earth, commemorations of the holiday take the form of rites that the world has not seen in 2,000 years. The Philippines is a lush land of palm trees and tropical sunsets, a land where Christian traditions run deep, a legacy of the Spanish occupation that began centuries ago. And while most of the country is traditional Catholic, there is an annual religious service here that is as shocking and extreme as any in this civilized world. In the impoverished villages near Mount Pinatubo, a community devastated by recent volcanic eruptions, Holy Week is a time of particular importance, a time to reach out for spiritual help in order to endure the hardships of life. Here, ardent believers seek delivery from sin through public display of humility by crawling towards the site of worship. The faithful display their absolute submissiveness to the will of God. Wearing a decoration symbolic of a crown of thorns, they invoke the very image of their Lord and Savior as well as turning an act of piety into something of a spectator sport. This arduous feat takes them from church to church and village to village, delivering a theatrical expression of faith to the peoples of the region. Another form of expression is self-flagellation, a tradition extending back many years and practiced by various cults in medieval Europe as well. It is a kind of homage to the torture experienced by Jesus at the hands of his persecutors. Believers seek to share the suffering endured by Christ himself and thus earn their own eternal salvation. In preparation for this ceremony, their backs are beaten with a cat o' nine tails to bring the blood near the surface of the skin. They are bound up as well, another gesture of self-sacrifice. Then incisions are made into the backs of the participants. This is done not so much to inflict pain as to create a bloody parade of self-torment intended to create a vivid display of piety and faith. And to remind all observers that salvation does not come without sacrifice and travail. treatment of alcohol provides a small attempt at hygiene, though bodily health hardly seems the priority here. But beyond even these incredible practices, we witness one of the most harrowing details in the Christian world. The faithful actually seek to reenact the crucifixion of Christ himself in all its ghastly details. Huge crosses weighing up to 300 pounds are constructed for the believers to carry to the site of their ultimate act of faith. As crowds follow to witness the strange spectacle,
spiked pallets are used to make cuts in the backs of the participants to recreate the wounds inflicted upon Jesus during his final hours of life. This is followed by one final flogging for good measure. Ironically, the event is marked by amused crowds and the festive atmosphere of something more like a county fair. This is in stark contrast to the moods of those who are about to be crucified. This is no melodramatic performance. The pain they will feel will be real. Invoking the image of their savior, the stars of this grim performance prepare for the astonishing climactic phase of their extraordinary ritual, the actual crucifixion. Clearly, this is a moment of mounting anxiety. Despite this man having been annually crucified 17 times before today, his hands are miraculously unmarked and they are not pierced ahead of time. This ritual will be authentic. Every detail has been considered as the final preparations are made. The belief is to ensure one's salvation, one must come as close as possible to experiencing the ultimate sacrifice. The sacrificial figures are laid on a cross and bound to it with ropes and cloth. Then, incredibly, the hands are actually punctured with a long steel spike. Finally, the cross is hoisted up to the vertical and the image is complete. Fascinated crowds surrounding them, these believers relive the last moments of Christ's life and portray his act of sacrifice for the good of humanity. It is an astounding vision to see the central icon of the Christian religion brought graphically to life. Agonizing as it must be, there seems no shortage of interest in both witnessing or taking part in this extraordinary event. For many years, this macabre ritual has been performed in the hopes that the struggling people of these rural Philippine villages will win God's mercy and assistance and assure their own eternal reward. The sincerity of their faith can hardly be questioned, but their particular form of religious expression is surely unique in the modern world. It is an exercise in rituals that are beyond bizarre.